Today's video is brought to you by Monoware, makers of high quality, unique Apple Watch accessories at reasonable prices. Hey, it's Chris, and this is a video I've been wanting to make for a long time, looking at the very best, non-fitness, I should say, Apple Watch apps. We all know the Apple Watch does fitness, does health tracking, but it's like, what else can it do that's worth being done? That's what this video is all about. So there's gonna be two parts. Number one is gonna be introducing you to a couple of new apps that I haven't really covered for the Apple Watch before in any meaningful way. So we're gonna look at those, and then I'm also, in part two of this video, which is gonna be much longer, I'm gonna talk about some of the apps that I've mentioned before and whether or not they are still worthwhile if they really belong on this list and how I use them. So it's gonna be a little bit of review, a little bit of new, and a lot of super useful for you. If you've ever gone out looking for awesome Apple Watch apps, you know they really just don't grow on trees. Like, it's hard to find new, different Apple Watch apps because the development's just not there. Now, there's way more Apple Watch apps than there are for other smartwatches, right? The app ecosystem in that way is fairly large, but still, it's hard to find something really new and awesome, which leads me to the first new app that I do wanna share with you, and it's spelled S-P-D-R. It's not spider, it's actually pronounced speeder, and it's a speed reading app for your Apple Watch. Why is this cool? For me, I love speed listening to audiobooks and podcasts because I like to cram in as much knowledge into my head in the smallest amount of time possible as I can. My wife is like, how can you possibly comprehend anything at those speeds? Because I listen at like two times speeds, but somehow I can do it. And on the Apple Watch, I've actually really been enjoying speed reading using Speeder. And it's really simple. So you work with the iPhone app, the Speeder app, which you can also use to speed read too, and you copy and paste text or import text or save to this app and add it to your reading list. Once it's there, it syncs up with your Apple Watch and you hold your finger on the Apple Watch to speed read. And it shows you one word at a time. You can adjust the speed and there's several different settings, like for the font and all kinds of stuff. I've kind of just left it alone, left it where it's at. And so it's actually, once you get used to it, especially spend a couple minutes just reading an article or something, and you can absorb so much information. I never thought I'd be reading in a meaningful way on the Apple Watch, much less speed reading. So this I've had so much fun with, I can't wait for you to try it. The second app that I've never talked about, I don't think here on the channel, is called Lens for Instagram. And what it is, is an Instagram client so that you can look at your Instagram feed, you can check comments, you can look at stories, which we'll talk about in just a second. It's pretty full featured and it's free too for the standard features. The reason this is awesome is because Instagram got rid of the actual Instagram app for the Apple Watch, as did Twitter, get rid of the official Twitter app. So to be able to go in and look at your feed on this nice Apple Watch screen and be able to see comments and interact with people is really great. Now, you can pay extra if you wanna be able to see stories, but in my opinion, stories, they just don't look right on the Apple Watch and it should be no surprise, right? The screen sizes between phones and the Apple Watch are totally different. And so that's something I would probably skip if I was you, unless you're desperate. Uh, but the actual core experience itself, being able to even go to the Explorer tab and like check out some new stuff is really great. So this is a must download if you're an Instagram user. I briefly contemplated mentioning a couple of Apple apps, but I think I'm gonna do a separate video on that. So if you're interested in getting more out of the official Apple Apple Watch apps, let me know, leave me a comment. But for now, we're gonna move into some of the other apps that I've covered in the past in several different videos, which I'll link up down below so you can go explore down that rabbit hole. These are some of my all-time favorites, and I wanna talk about how I use them. Are they still good, like a couple years later? So the first one I wanna talk about, and I've talked about it a couple of times before, is Drafts. Because if there's one app that I think a third party app that I couldn't live without, that I would hate to see go on the Apple Watch, it would be Drafts. Now, Drafts is a note-taking app. It mostly works by dictation, 
and I don't use it as my main note-taking app. That's Apple Notes right now. I've talked about Bear on the Apple Watch in the past, but I kind of quit using that. Uh, I could make a whole video about that too. But Drafts is sort of like a backup that's always with me. And I know that I can always, if I have an idea, get it down and into Drafts, and it goes into an inbox, which I can manage. And it's so cool to be able to append or prepend, which basically just means add text before or after whatever note you've made or that's in your inbox. It's actually really full featured, really powerful. It's always on my wrist, always with me, and it's always one of my main complications. I love drafts on the Apple Watch. A second app for the Apple Watch that is one of my all time favorites is Nano. It's a Reddit client for your wrist. And it's not just a Reddit client, like maybe you would expect it to be like really wimpy on your Apple Watch. It's pretty full featured. So for instance, I can look at my home feed and just see all the content that I've subscribed to, all the subreddits, all in one place. Or if I want to, I can go into individual subreddits that I'm interested in and just see those. And I can look at my profile and there's some settings that I can change. But when I'm actually looking at a post, I can upvote or downvote, I can comment. It's very interactive. And if you deep press, you'll see that you can get a variety of different options and ways to sort things. So it's surprisingly full featured. Of course, I've got mindset to check out a bunch of Apple related subreddits and I'm in there all the time and it's very useful and I can engage with the community right on my wrist. If you guys know anything about me, you know that I'm really into data and metrics and KPIs and just being able to see patterns and see what's good and what's working, what's changed, what's not working. So Numerics is an app that I've talked about before. It's great on the iPhone, it's great on the iPad, it's great on the Apple TV, but I can't believe I can actually use it on my Apple Watch. This is one of the more useful things for business users. So the main use for me for Numerics is to check out my YouTube statistics. So I've got it set up and syncing up with my account, and then I've picked four or five really interesting metrics for me that I really wanna track wherever I am on my Apple Watch, and I've set those to send to my Apple Watch using the iPhone app. Cheat Sheet is an app that I've covered that is a note-taking app, but it's really a, a micro note-taking app. It's not meant to be a full featured note app. It's really meant to be more of like stash some things here when you absolutely need to remember them and not sensitive stuff. Like you could store some sensitive stuff in the 1Password Apple Watch app, which is cool if you're into that, like your garage code or something, if you were gonna forget that. But for this, it's just for non-sensitive stuff that you definitely wanna remember. So one of the ways that I've used this heavily in the past is to keep track of how many words in a video equals how long a video will be. So for instance, I have programmed in here that 6,000 words is gonna equal about 30 minutes of a video. 5,000 words at my talking rate is gonna be about 25 minutes. So I've already talked a little bit about social media with Blends for Instagram, but let's not leave Twitter out of the picture. I also wanna talk about J, which is a Twitter client for the Apple Watch that's really full feature. I mean, you can view videos on your Apple Watch Maybe like the only way that I've discovered so far to see video content on your Apple Watch that works really well is through J. So Twitter videos play really great on J with sound, by the way. But aside from that, it's great to be able to scroll through your Twitter timeline and interact with people. And aside from video, this is great for like images too because that's a big part of the Twitter experience. So if somebody tweets an interesting image and you can't really see it fully on your Apple Watch screen, you can tap on it and then use the digital crown to zoom in to get that extra level of detail, which is very cool. So if you click onto an actual tweet, you can comment on it, which is great. You can retweet you can heart something and you can bookmark it. If there's something that you wanna see later on your phone, on the bigger screen, you can bookmark it and come back to it. So this is a really helpful, really useful, really engaging app. Something else that's really awesome is the Audible app for the Apple Watch. Now, this isn't as fully featured as you might suspect, but what you can do is sync one of your audiobooks to your Apple Watch. And it takes a little while because it can be kind of a big file and you have to make sure your Apple Watch is charging on its stand and there's like a process. But it's worth it if you wanna ditch your phone and you can sync so wherever you're at, it's gonna stay synced up. 
And so once you get an audiobook loaded up, you can see the cover art and you can obviously skip forward or go back or play and pause. You can control a timer, like a sleep timer. So if you just wanna to listen to it for a little bit. So it's great to be able to have my Apple Watch with me, pick up my AirPods and go somewhere and just be able to enjoy an audiobook without the phone. Getting back to the more practical side of things though, I wanna talk about Hindsight. Hindsight is an app that basically lets you track things. I talked about another app called Clicker, and it's kind of in the same vein as this. Definitely worth checking out too. Maybe I'll link it up if I remember down below. But Hindsight will actually, aside from just counting how many times you have done something, it will tell you how long it's been since that thing has been done. So the way I use this for a long time was like tracking medicine. Like if I got a migraine and I wanted to know when did that happen or when did I take some medicine for that, I could track that really easily here. And then maybe, export that data, which you can do, into a CSV document and put it in a spreadsheet. And so it's actually a very, very practical app. And there's nothing better than being able to just tap something on your wrist instead of having to get your phone out and open something up and track it that way. That's more cumbersome. So right to the point, hindsight is great. A long time ago, I mentioned an app called Just Press Record, which was an audio recording app which I'm not using anymore. Now, I'm not using it, not because it's bad, but because with watchOS 6, which I've been testing the beta of, Apple finally gave us real Apple voice memo support. So the voice memo app has officially landed on the watch, and that is a great interface. It's gonna sync really well for me. I had a few issues with just press record in the past, so it's just much more reliable and I use it for everything. If I'm gonna be in a meeting and I don't wanna take notes, but it's something important, maybe something just popped up spur of the moment and it's important information and I need to record it, then I will use the Voice Memos app to do that. Last, but definitely not least, we have to talk about podcasts. I mentioned podcasts a little bit earlier, but I used to use Pocket Cast. It was my go-to. I recommended it all the time here on the channel. It was everywhere. The problem is it was glitchy. It was buggy. It just didn't work everywhere, all the time, no matter what. And so I switched over, I've talked about this a little bit too, to Overcast, which I feel is not as well designed, maybe, in the iPhone app or elsewhere, but it works. It works reliably, all the time. And it works great on the Apple Watch too. So when I'm podcasting with just the watch and my AirPods, it's overcast. If you're looking for some affordable yet stylish Apple watch bands and cases, check out today's sponsor, Monoware. I've been testing out some great bands for Monoware lately, ranging from a nylon band with a very unique look to a leather band with that timeless style as well as unique clasp and a metal link band that has a more substantial feel. Of course, being an Apple Watch fanatic, I've collected lots of bands over the years and the mono chest lets me store three favorites plus charge my Apple Watch while still being able to see the face. So do yourself a favor, Apple Watch fans, and check out Monoware today using the link in the description. Now here at the very end, I'm gonna give you guys kind of like a bonus thing because it's not something that I use all the time because I'm an Apple Music user, but I just wanna mention, since the last Apple Watch apps video that I made, Spotify came out with an Apple Watch app. So if you're a Spotify user and you didn't know, you can grab the Spotify app for your Apple Watch and use it. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know what you thought. I know this format was a little bit different, uh, but give me your feedback down below. Let me know if you wanna see more Apple Watch content. And you know what? Just let me know what you wanna be seeing on this channel in general. Do you like an old series that we've done and haven't done for a while? Do you wanna see something new? Let me know, leave me your comments. I'll link this stuff up down below, so don't forget to check it out. Check out our other channels and podcasts. I'll link that stuff up. More content is coming soon, I promise. Just been busy here wrapping up the summer. And I guess I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.